Hi, I'm Lel from Made by Marley and today I'm going to be using the Shield um, Craft Blank um, and I'm going to be doing something for a children's room which is a full taxidermy fox head uh, or that is hopefully the plan. Uh, I've never done these before so we'll you can follow along and you can kind of learn from my mistakes. So I'm going to get started so I'll point the camera down now. So what you, you need to make this is you need a Made by Marley um, shield plaque. Um, that's the first thing you're going to need. Um, or you can just cut one out a bit of wood or you could probably maybe even use cardboard. I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't. So you need that. You need some orange felt, some white felt and I've got some black felt here because I want to make a nose but I've only got one white felt ball so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the nose like that to make a to make a little black nose like that so that's how that's going to happen hopefully and um, so you need some felt and a little felt ball some scissors you need a hot glue gun you need a sewing kit and you need some little buttons or something for your fox's eyes and this is optional some ribbon i'm going to put a little bow around his neck or something when we're finished um so the first thing we're going to do to get started is i'm going to paint my my shield craft blank white so i'm going to do that off camera and once i've done that i'll get back to you so you need this kind of shape it's kind of hard to describe i've cut it flat here because this is where my nose is going to go but this is the kind of shape you need, yeah? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and cover the nose. And for what, how I'm going to do that is I just need a bit of square of fabric, uh, a square of the black felt, and I'm just going to cut. Now, you, if you have a black felt ball, then you don't need to do any of this, but I don't have one, so. Um, and then just kind of gather it round really tightly round your ball like that and then get a good grip of it now i'm tempted just to put a bit of because you're not going to actually see this and it's going to be able to secure it tight i'm tempted just to get a piece of thin gauge wire around it instead of trying to work with a piece of thread and i'll probably get the kind of yeah i've got the kind of pressure i need with that um so i've wound the and I'm just going to leave those end bits in because I'm going to stuff this. I forgot to say you need a big pile of stuff in. Um, so tuck my ends in like that. So before I do anything else and before I stitch this up the sides, um, I'm going to try. No, I'm actually going to stitch it round because I think it will sit quite nice. Then what you need to do is stitch up your cone. So there's your nose in the end. If I can get you a good shot. And there's your cone that I just cut out of that sort of, any sort of cone shape. I mean, I might have to trim this. It could be too big for the plaque, but I'm just going to go in for a sort of kind of pointy feel. And I'm then going to stuff it really tight and then I'll put these white kind of bits down. But I'll, I'll sew this up tightly first. And then we will, um, well, we've been, this, I've been cutting out the cone. I've painted my craft blank shield white. Well, actually, it's the same paint that I usually use. It's the Rust-Oleum um, chalky finish furniture paint in antique white. So it's a slight off white because that's the one I normally use. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute once I've stitched this all up the size. Now I'm not very good at stitching, so it could be some time. My sewing skills leave a lot to be desired, but this is the kind of shape you should have. I've tightened it in quite a lot there so that it kind of if I lay it down flat you'll be able to see it, it kind of goes up like this the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pack it really tight with stuffing so use a pair of scissors or something I mean I'm sure there's people out there that go no I don't use scissors because I want this really really tight so pack as much stuffing into it as you can and more. And more. Now, 
once it's packed, it can be tight. I think I need to push some of that down. You've got to watch when you're poking it down with the scissors. You don't want to poke right through the side of it. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to cut um, a piece of orange fell out and I'm just thinking the top of my ribbon thing, slightly too large, um, cut a circle out. Now it's not going to be perfect this bit um, but um, once the stuffing's in we need to cut a circle so I'm going to stop the camera and try and contain my stuffing while I cut a circle. I'm going to, I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to sit it down on a piece of paper like this and draw around it so it's the sort of rough sort of size I'm looking for. So you know like put it down flat and do it. I'm sure there's easier ways and people who sew things who probably have got a better way of doing it but that's this is how I'm going to do it. So uh, I'll stop the camera and I'll come back and I'll do this. So here we are. That's this is what I did. I, squished it all in nice and tight and then I sat it down flat and I drew around and this is the shape which is a kind of strange shape and this is what I'm going to cut out um, the back and um, you're not going to see this piece because it's going to be mounted and then you just need to just cut around it I'm not even gonna I'm just being a really rough because I don't actually kind of know if this is you know maybe slightly should I maybe cut it a wee bit bigger? I don't know, I'm just playing it by ear. So, yeah. And if that orange fell to the side, move the template to the side, don't need it. Now, how to contain this in here right now while I sew it is going to be tricky. I think the best thing I can do is if I don't actually have any pins in my sewing box which is typical I think it might be in my other studio so what I'll do is I think I'll just secure it with some needles which, which I have here any port in a storm just put one on that side and one over on this side starting to take shape now once it's all stitched together it should hopefully really become apparent what's going to happen so um, so this is going to push in here like this and this is the bit that's going to be flat on the plaque and this is going to be his his wee head so what I'm going to do off camera now is I'm going to stitch all the way along there as I said Stitching is not my, it's not my forty. I didn't have any orange um, thread, so I used a really dark red just so that you couldn't see it. But I'll start the process off um, of how I would do it. I'm just going to do a. I don't even know the name of stitches. I'm a ceramic artist, not not um, a seamstress. But this is how I would do it, just round and round. And these kind of things I always think are quite cute if you can see the way the stitching is. So I'm just going to go round and round. I make my own curtains and cushions and things, but that's as far as I go. I mean, sewing so is, I leave it to the people that are that are really good at it. I admire people who can, who can, do you know what the reason why I think I don't sew is because I think it requires a patience that I don't think I have. It's like people who can knit and crochet. I've got all these amazing things on Pinterest and I can knit and crochet uh, my grand taught me when I was young however I'm not really brilliant at either one of them and um, so I really admire when I see some like some of the things that people can make are absolutely phenomenal amazing and the time and the skill so I've done so much of it so there that's what I've done so far as I said 
my sewing skills leave a lot to be desired but um, hopefully you're not going to see too much of that because it's going to be glued onto the black so I'll re-thread my needle and I'll get back to you when I've stitched all the way around the outside so I've done his body and I've got his his back bit which is going to be glued onto the shield and what I've done is I got a little bit of cardboard and I cut out a triangle and I cut two orange triangle eh, sorry two orange triangles yeah and two white triangles because these are going to be his ears I cut one long white triangle because that's got to measure from the tip of his nose to up round his head and it's going to be sewn on like that and a sort of funky sort of Christmas tree shape which is going to be his white fur um, underneath here so it's going to be sewn on something something like that um, underneath so I'm going to show you now what I intend to do with the ears now I've cut these triangles out but I want the white one to be smaller so what I'm going to do is I am going to just adjust my template so that I've got a little when I because I'm going to scuff these so that I've got a little bit of the orange showing when I sew them so I'm just going to go back in there with you know I had to swap scissors because these there's red scissors not very good for the felt and now I've made my inside of my white slightly smaller and I'll do the same with this one and uh, we're gonna just stitch them together now it's going to be quite awkward it's going to be quite entertaining when you stitch them together but um hopefully this should work um sorry it was off camera there um so there's the white triangle and the orange triangle and i'm going to have to sew these with white thread which means it's not going to be very forgiving um because you're going to see where my stitches have been so i'll try and make a nice job of it so that you're not going to have thread see the white thread but it's white thread and needle so I'm going to start at the top try and keep it central which then will because then it saves me having to worry going to do this. So I'm just putting my two, my outside edge of my orange and my inside edge of my white together like that. And hopefully when we stuff it there should be, um, it should have a little bit of the, the orange going around the edge. Now I'm not sure if this is the concept that this is the actual way I should be doing this but well, well, it remains to be seen, doesn't it? So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to stitch both my ears together and then I'm going to stuff them and we'll come back and see if that worked. Okie doke. So I've already done one and I've stuffed it. I've stuffed it nice and tight and I just thought I'd show you how I did it. So I sewed round my two edges and I got quite a lot of wadding for just a tiny, tiny little ear. Pushed it down. Pushed it in with scissors or something pokey. So it's nice and tight. Then, then I just stitched it up like that all along the join and 
sewed right to the very end and there you have your two ears. Oops, cut on that. Right to the end. I'm doing this even quicker than I normally would, so please don't be judging my sewing skills. They are not competent at all. Just enough to get by. Right. And I'll do through there like that and do that. So I have my two two little foxy ears and now we need to work out where we're going to put them and again I'm just going to use some needles to save me having to go and get my pins and um, just want to get the position right you want them quite high up in the head so I think I'll do maybe one about here And the other one will be close beside it here. And I'll pin this in the way. In you go. So I'm going to stitch these on now because I've just got them holding in place before we move on to um, the next thing. So. I'm going to go away and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch them from the front here. I'm going to put my line of stitches around the front so that they kind of move because they're going to be kind of forward when he goes on the on the plinth, okay? So I'll go and do this now and uh, we'll come back. So I have sewn his ears on like that and the long pointy Christmas tree shape that um, I showed you I've went and cut some bits on here because when I went to try it on I decided that I'm going to put his eyes from here to here and if it went up like that it would obscure the eyes so I really think you kind of have to just kind of suck it and see and make it up as you go along. Now how I'm going to stitch this on is I'm actually going to gather my stitch all the way along the join like that to give him another sort of kind of like sort of kind of like another bit of interest dimension. And then I've got these two tiny, 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 tiny black buttons. I'm going to sew them on for eyes. So I'll sew on this and I'll sew on the eyes and we'll be back again in a couple. So I've done his eyes and his nose. This is him from side angle. Now I've just had a little bit of a, and I stitched right down the stitching. So it's kind of like, you know, he's white first kind of moving. Now, I just had a bit of an inspiration. He's supposed to be going on this white and white on white. I really don't think that's, what do you think? It's not working for me, but this color here, he looks really good on. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna paint the back of this um, uh, wooden um, shield plaque, that greeny color. I'm gonna have to mix them up to do it because it was my own mix that. And then we are just about ready to... Now, again, because this is the thing about not having a pattern and not really knowing, you're just making it up as you go along. This was the funny Christmassy shape, but it was flat here. What I've done is I've done two points because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this onto here like this and this bit's going to come onto the board. Um, you know, like he's kind of like... And then I'm going to put a bow and things on it. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and paint the thing and I'm going to try and adjust and stitch my kind of white only half on. So you're only going to put this much and you're going to leave this much. Try and do, you know, that, that this bit's going to glue onto the plaque and this bit's going to be stitched on his body. So I'll do that and I'll paint the plaque green and we'll be back. So I've finished him. He's done. And this is his... Now, I overcomplicated it. I decided to stitch. I don't know what I thought it was going to add, but it turns out it didn't really add anything. And I did it in black contrast just to kind of give it a little bit of texture, but I'm not sure if it worked. Now, the next thing um, we're going to do is I'm waiting on my hot glue gun heating up because we're going to glue a piece of cardboard onto the back of the fox head to make it easier to glue it onto our board onto our little taxidermy shield. So, 
it's just out of a, an old birthday card. Before we do that, I want to put some whiskers in them and I've just cut out some thin gauge wire. I've got three pieces, about, I want them quite long. Now this wire is green, now I contemplated and just quickly dry brushing them once they were in um, black, but because my base is green, I've decided I'm just gonna leave them now. I haven't actually tried to do this, so let's see if I can. I wanna try and thread these pieces of wire right through the felt and right through the stuffing to make whiskers. I'm not going to attach them in any way, I'm just going to hope for the best. And I think I've got what's the last one. You think you've got it, you know where it's coming out the other side, but then it does a weird thing and goes out a different route. Um, I think I'm going to maybe tuck it out this side. So there he is. That's his fo foxy type whiskers. And just waiting on my hot glue gun and we will glue it now. What I suggest you probably do is just kind of squeeze this in a little bit. It's ready for the card because you want to stick him on kind of like that. Now while this is, I decided I'm going to put a kind of bow on him, like almost a bow tie. So how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to do two loops. So one loop and the other one a little bit shorter. And another loop like this and then all I'm going to do is get a piece of this, fold it in the middle and use my teeth to tie it tightly in a knot like that and then we can have these bit, we can see what these bits are like, I'll cut them like this just in case we can incorporate them into the bow. Then just kind of like fluff it up a bit. Best way to do that is just to pull down on those bits. Maybe pull this bit round to the front. So this is the kind of thing I'm looking for, and it's going to go on here, or maybe at a jaunty angle on the side, I think. So let's see if my hot glue gun is warm. Now I don't have the answer of how we're going to do this. I'm just going to cover this in hot glue and then. Um, my hot glue gun's not warm enough. I'll stop the camera until my hot glue gun heats up and will crackle. Okay, so ready to glue my shape. So I'm gonna just cover it completely in hot glue. And then stick it on and I'm gonna lean it down on the surface. Maybe like that so you can see what I'm doing. I think it's just going to make it easier if I stick him on like like this as opposed to other more tricky ways of getting hot glue everywhere and I don't really want to do that. So now I'm going to have to stand up for this position. And so I think about here. What I'm going to do is, because this is going to be glued down separately, I'm just going to put a little mark under here so I know where um, the glue is going to go, where he's going to be positioned, sorry. So, plenty of glue. I'm just going to kind of go off the sides here a little bit and a little bit here. Yeah, I just don't want 
starting to come back off and using that gate I'm going to stand up and apply lots of pressure and the last thing I'm going to do is just Let's just glue that. There's a little bit of white down in there. And you're going to use a glue gun stick. It's always the same. We're just about to finish the project and we need to bring that in. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to have it off at an angle or in the middle. So I think I'm going to have it. I think I'm going to have it slap bang in the middle. Oops, a little bit of marbles come out and down. I'll just put a little bit of glue on that. And then maybe I'll make it any different. And put some glue across the back of my bow and just glue that down. Hold it for a couple of minutes. Now, I'm going to take the camera off the stand and pause it for a minute to the camera off the stand so that I can show you um, how he looks when he's, he's finished. Okay. Sorry I'm having to reach across my buttons, but okay. There he is. Ignore the mess in the background. So, oh, I forgot to see I sewed a little mouth on, mouth on him. There's the base. Here he is from that side angle. Over the top, there's his whiskers, and there. Now I'll give him a staging photo, but that's him done. If you like this video today, and you like to see more crafts or home decor or farmhouse style or how I decorate things, then please, please, please subscribe. I've, I've only got one subscriber, and um, and if you really like it, then share this video, and um, other people can make one too.